If you recall, last week we started honing this whole block, and I realized, you know, it's a pretty messy operation with this setup, so I decided to build a tank. Well, I got my metal over in the back of the truck, but I've changed my plans. I'll tell you about it in just a minute. Yes, sir, I had intentions of building us a tank out of this here stainless. But then about five minutes ago, I remembered, hey, I got another tank. Let me show y'all what I'm talking about. See that red tank right there? Completely forgot I had it. Yes, sir, sure did. Remember the old feller uh, we worked on his truck a couple weeks ago at C30? He gave me this, I don't know, four, five, six years ago. This old diesel tank. Throw it in the back of your truck, run around your farm, filling up your tractors or whatever. Um, it... It's going to be a little bit better than what I was going to build, a little bigger. I'll tell you all about it here in a minute. Let me get this drug in the shop, and we'll go to working on it. There's a shadow on my camera, or a reflection. Y'all see it? It's about right, let me see, right there. And then there's some reflections right in here, too. Uh, there's no telling. I'll probably drop the phone and tore the camera up again. I'll have to look at that later. That's kind of annoying, though. Um, you might be wondering, why you got that big old tank up on the table? Just work on the floor. Well, I can't tell you because <laughs> I was told a couple days ago I can't talk about my knee anymore. No, sir. The feller said, I wish you'd quit talking about your blankety blank knee. <laughs> well, fellas, he's no longer with us, by the way. I blocked him. You don't, you don't tell me what to do. You just don't do that. But anyway, the reason it's up on this table because of my knee. If it was down here, I'd have to be on my knees. And no, sir, I don't want to do that. So I put it up here. I can get to it easily. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this piece of angle iron, we're gonna attach it to the side, all half inch or so down. Take my plasma cutter and zip right through it. You know, it had diesel in it. I got one of the caps off and then I got the old pump off. And hopefully, I don't blow myself up. I don't think I will, because it's got some water in it now. Matter of fact, we got a little leak in this corner we gotta find and fix. But hopefully, fingers crossed anyway, I don't blow myself up cutting and welding on this thing. Let me get busy. We'll get that top cut off. Well, I do believe I have figured out what is wrong with my camera. <laughs> um, I'm using my phone. It's got three separate cameras. One that zooms out, one that, you know, is not zoomed, and the one that zooms in. The one that zooms out, it looks like I have cracked the screen, the lens, whatever you want to call it. I'll have to take the back off. Well, I'll have to get a new one, take the back off and replace it. I tell you, it's always something around here. Yes, sir. Anyways, let's get over here and work on this tank. Got a divider right there. Well, that ain't good. No, so we'll have to cut that out. Darn it! Or you think I'll iron fall off? Got a divider in the middle 
metal. I'm gonna go whacka, whacka, get this top off and then we'll cut that divider out. fumes get to my eyes and I just can't see. Whew. Don't try this at home kids. You know my warning at the first of my videos. It's there for a reason. Don't do what I do. Ta -da! She's pretty doggone nasty as you can see us. All kind of sludgery and stuff. Butts down there in the bottom. And we'll drag her outside there. Wash it out a little bit. I'll be back in a minute. Got it washed out. It cleaned up pretty good. That diesel sort of coated everything where nothing really stuck. Uh, it almost looked like creek mud or something in it. But once I got it cleaned out, our hole revealed itself. Quite large. Let me see if I can't weld that up real quick. And then we'll water test it and make sure I got it. I think I'm a wee bit hot. All right, here's how you check for leaks if you can't fill it up with air. You hit her with some soaps. Take your blowy blow nozzle, hit that area right there. See that bubble? Right there, we got us a leak. Got us a leak over here, a little one over here. Let me make another pass or two on either side of it. again i've been taking a really close look at my phone here i believe a sparky spark hit it from either the welder or the grinder i think that's what happened to my last one that's why i had to get this phone so um i gotta find me some kind of a plastic screen to cover this up i'll see what i can find tonight anyways let's get back to working on this tank get it done all right let's see if we got any bubbles on this here weld Yes, sir, we got one right there. Other than that, I think we're all right. So let me let me hit this back here. I think we'll be done with that. Well, the Bantry's died on my welding helmet here, so I had to stop and go to the Walmarts and buy these goofy-looking watch batteries. CR2450s is what they are. Then I started welding again, and, well, I just keep finding holes. Found one there, and then there's a bunch of little pinholes here, and there's some here. So what I'm going to do is take my wiry wheel. I'm going to clean this area up real good. There's one right there. I just see daylight through it right there. Uh, clean this up real good. I don't have any caulk, so I'm going to use some RT and V. We're going to spread it all over and let it dry. Then we're going to come back and weld us some casters on it. And then got my pump and stuff over there. we got to hook up. In true MLS fashion, it keeps getting worse and worse. Look at all them giant holes. Yes, sir. I can't fill them in with RTV. And it's so thin, I can't weld it either. Same thing over here. 
There's some in there and some all up in here. I don't see any right in here. Well, yes, I do too. I think there's some right in there. What I think I might do is we're just gonna make us a patch panel and weld it over that. Probably do the same thing here and right here. Let me grind these welds down flat and then cut me some metal out. Well, I got my patch panels cut. No, they're not cut straight. No, I don't care. Uh, one will go there. One will go right there. And then this one shall go right there. Let me get them welded up. Got it flipped over. Let's go ahead and put these casters on here. Well, I rolled it down here to the end of the shop. I'm gonna fill it up all three or four inches. If I don't see any drips underneath, they were good. If I do see drips. Well, I'm gonna break out the old RTMV and go to plug and hold. I got it filled up past my patches here. It's probably got about three inches in it. And we got two leaks under here. And we got one leak over here on the side. As you can see, I've already got a mark with my soapstone. So let me get that water out. We'll take it back over to the welder, see if I can't weld them up, and we'll check it again. Well, I took it up there, turned it over, welded to several spots, <laughs> you can see. I think it's worse. Yep. Uh, I blew a couple of holes. That's probably where it's leaking now. So what we're going to do, put we on welding it, let me get the RTV out. We'll smear a bunch of that on there, and hopefully that'll take care of it. I was planning on this taking two hours, maybe three. And, well, that two to three hours, it's been gone two to three hours ago. Yes, sir. I was planning on having the block honed. Yes, sure was. Um, that's the way it goes. In the land of MLS, in the land of backyard butchery, well, you can double and triple your time that you think it's going to take. Yes, sir. Uh, anyway, I got this side RTV'd. That side RTV'd. It was still leaking over here just a wee bit. It was leaking over there a lot. Kept blowing holes. I mean, this stuff is super thin. It's really rusty. I mean, you see all the craters there. It's pretty bad. Yeah. We well, would have been better off <laughs> to build a whole tank out of that stainless. Yes, sir. Sure would have been. Oh, well. Um, I'm going to go in the house, fellas. I know I ain't supposed to talk about it, but my knee is killing me. I'm going to go in the house, let this dry. Tomorrow, we'll check out for leaks. And then I got to, well, where's my pump? I got to wire my pump up, and then I got this little feller here. And we got to set all that up. I got to get the block situated in there. And then maybe we can start honing that block. Got her filled up once again. And... We ain't got no leakages. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Ain't none over here either. So let me get up off my knees. I'm going to show you my pump and all that kind of stuff. Well, here's my pump we're going to put in the bottom of the tank. Pretty sure it's nothing more than a pond pump, but they're calling it a parks washer pump. It probably won't hold up to the diesels we're going to be running through it, but if it lasts long enough to do this one block, then, well, I'll find me a different pump. This little apparatus here, I don't know what you call it, but you can flex this any way you want to. Uh, we're gonna have a hose running from here to here. This is magnetical. Put it on the block, aim that at our cylinders, and keep on trucking with the honing. Um, wiring, I don't know why they don't send this with a cord. I guess they want you to electrocute yourself. Um, what I'm gonna do probably is just drill a hole through the side of the tank. Put me a grommet in there, run that through there, and then uh, uh, silicone or probably RTV the hole so we don't leak any fluids on the floor then I'll put me a box and a switch or something on the outside I don't think I have a box or a switch yes I think I do actually let me go see if I can find them and we'll get to putting this stuff in that tank well I turned the radio on I got Pandora over on the old cell phone uh, got a Bluetooth speaker hooked up to it been jamming to some good old bluegrass oh yeah Got busy working, and well, I just forgot to turn the camera on, yes sir. Had to go to Lowe's and get my, all of my electrical stuff. This is, I promise you, it's built to NEC code book. <laughs> it's, 
It's built for a wet, wet location, absolutely. I don't skimp on safety around here. Those that know me, no, I don't skimp on safety. <laughs> anyway, um, got my little fountain pump. That's basically what it is. Down in there, it's five gallons of diesel. I might go get five, five gallons more because it ain't quite deep enough. Um, but it is enough for it to pick up and, and go to spray. And oh yeah, look at there. We got us a fountain of diesel fuels. Um, the reason I wanted to use this tank and not make the other one, I didn't have enough metal to make it this long. Now we can do straight sixes. We can do straight eights. Might be one of them in the future. You don't ever know around here. Of course, we can put a big block in here. We got a 390 Ford we can put in here. Oh yeah. We can hone just about any motor that we want to. And plus, you know, it's sitting down in here and it'll splash on that and knock me all over the floor. I do wish it was a little taller. It ain't but two feet tall. Uh, I wish it was, I don't know, maybe a foot taller, but the hone, see how long that is? And then you add the drill to that. And with it on the engine stand, you know, way up here with the drill. This will make it more comfortable. We'll just have to see. If I like it, I'll leave it alone. If not, we might put them uh, casters on some stilts one of these days. But I do believe this will work just fine and dandy for honing blocks. I wish I had another one for a hot tank. And uh, yeah, that would be nice. May have to build one eventually. I'm gonna build a wooden uh, plywood top to set on it to keep, one, the diesel smell out, to keep it from evaporatizing. Diesel smell stinks. That's one of the reasons I don't like diesel. Man, they stink. When I come in the door every day now, I smell diesel, smell like a diesel shop. I don't like them. <laughs> anyway, we're ready to hone, but I ain't doing it right now. It's late, I got too busy doing other stuff. Uh, anyway, tomorrow we're gonna hone this, pull it out, clean it up, Start putting it together. All right, here we go. Let me turn the pump on. Let's see how this is gonna do. It's gonna do fine and bendily what it's gonna do. Oh yeah. Let me aim this about right there. All right, let me check out. I ain't sure my home was tight enough. Let me get my double gauge and I'll check that real quick. I need to make a holder for this too. I can see that right now. What do we have? That's the only bad thing about this. I got to get down on my knees to, to see this thing. We got... Well, we ain't done nothing. What we got at the bottom. Yeah, we ain't done nothing. Let me tighten them stones up and keep on trucking. Oh yeah, they're really loose. Let me tighten it on up. We'll try that right there. All right, check it again. All right, what do we got now? Well, I ain't done already nothing. Maybe a quarter of a thousand. Yeah. I'll be back when I get it closer to 31. All right, I'm getting really, really close. I'm like, you know, within a quarter of a thousand, except for the bottom, you know, it's tapered. I don't know how you avoid tapering them when, you, when you're honing them, but it's probably a half, quarter to a half a thousand less in the bottom. And the reading I've done says anywhere from a thousand to five thousand taper is a, is good. Five thousand seems like a lot, so I'm shooting for one or less. I think we'll be there. Let me hit it one more time, and I'll check it, and then I'll probably pull out the old dingleberry home. Let me loosen that up just a wee bit. I'm trying to dwell at the bottom more. And it don't really seem to help any. All right, let me check out and see what we got. What do we have? At the very top, we got right at 31. That's what we want. In the middle, we got 30 and a half. The bottom. About 30 and a quarter. 
I don't really like that. Let me, let me hit the bottom a little bit more, see what I can do with it. All right, check it one more time. I am checking the calibration on this thing every time too, and it's it hasn't moved, so that is awesome. We got, that's still 31 at the top, the middle. That is just almost 31. The bottom, it's come up to 30 and a half. I'm gonna leave it. Um, you know, the minimum clearance was 1,000. 30 and a half gives us uh, the 28 three quarter, 29 three quarter, inch, one and three quarter thousandths. I'm good with that. Let me get my dingleberry home and we'll give it a good cross hatch. All right, let's give her the old cross hatch real quick. Let me get a flashlight, I can't really see. Oh yeah, that is just, that's better than the first one. That right there, oh wait a minute now. Yes sir, it's better than the first one. Oh yeah, two cylinders down, six to go. That took, oh my knee, probably 15 minutes. It's going much, much faster than before. Let me finish this up and I'll be back. Well fellas, I just honed Half of this block in less than an hour. That is a far cry from what we did last time. It was days. Uh, yes, it was just a very frustrating process. Last time, I think the setup we got now. Gonna be awesome. Look at cross at you in there. Oh yeah. It almost looks like I know what I'm doing. Yes, sir. Let me pull this out and flip it over and get the other half done. Up, up, and away! Going down. <laughs> up, up and away once more. <laughs> Going down again. Last cylinder, I got about a half a thousand to go. Let's see if we can get this done. Oops. If you're noticing, I'm staying down at the bottom a lot because for whatever reason, it wants to taper down that way. So I have to stay down at the bottom to keep that from happening. All right, let's check it and see what we got. What do we have? We have, that is just a hair under 31. Same thing. Same thing. Let me hit it real quickly one more time. Then I'll get the dingleberry hone on it. That'll probably do it. Let me check it. Pretty much dead on 31. Same thing there. Same thing there. Oh yeah. Let me get the dingleberry hone. In less than two hours. This block is completely honed. Oh yeah. Like I said before, if you remember on Dude, it was just a disaster. How long did it take? A week? Probably. I don't know. But this this setup here with the diesel, the, the cutting fluid, that's that's the way to go. It keeps them stones clean. Just cut right through it. Uh, my little stop I put on my home too. That's awesome. I didn't have no trouble about busting stones. It's the little things that really excite me. <laughs> it sure is. But uh, I'm very pleased with it. Uh, Y'all look at that cross hatch. Oh yeah. Here at Backyard Butchery Shop, let me tell you, we do it somewhat right <laughs> anyway. Um, 
I'm gonna start scrubbing on this, but I gotta go help my handy dandy assistant work on his lift again. So I don't know if I'll get it completely cleaned tonight. I don't know, it depends on how long we stay down there. I might come back and scrub on it some more. I'd like to get this thing put together pretty much tomorrow. What's gonna slow me down? Getting these uh, rods off these pistons. That, that's a little time consuming. Maybe we'll get maybe we'll get most of it put together anyway. Well, actually we can't though. I gotta pull the motor because I gotta have the heads, intake, oil pan. Maybe we'll pull the motor tomorrow. That's what we'll do. We'll pull the motor tomorrow and then we'll go to putting this thing together. Um, until then, I'll see y'all later. Well, I'm back from helping my handy dandy assistant work on his lift. We made a little more progress. That thing, I'm telling you, it is a mess. The wiring, holy crap, holy, it is a mess. Uh, we just had to work on it for a little while and then I'll get stumped and I'll just have to quit and study the print and come back later and work on it some more. Made a little progress, found a few wires that weren't hooked up, got them hooked up. Anyway, um, what I got, I forgot I had this tub over at Mama's. I went and got it. I'm going to set that block down in that tub. I got 15 gallons of purple pyre I just bought at Walmart a little while ago. We're going to pour that in there, fill the rest up with waters. Gonna let it soak, but well, I'm gonna scrub on it a little bit after we get it in that tank. Go to scrubbing here and on the front and the back. Let it soak overnight, but we're, yeah, we're doing this backwards. Don't, we need to do this step before we bore it. That way we ain't gotta worry about our pretty new uh, cylinders flash rusting. Well, y'all know me, I always do stuff backwards anyway, but from now on, y'all remind me, let's clean the block first. Anyway, let me get that over in there and get that filled up. Got it in the tub, got it filled up. That's 20 gallons. A purple power. I had 15 gallons I went and got new, and then there was five old over at Mama's, went and got it, put it in there. It wasn't quite covering the lifter valley, so I went and got, I don't know, eight or 10 of them paver bricks, put it in there, brought the level up. I have scrub a dub dubbed, front, back, top, bottom, sides, everywhere you can find. We're gonna let her soak overnight. Tomorrow morning, hopefully we'll get it pulled out. Pressure wash it. Uh, I'm sure we'll have to scrub more. We'll have to knock freeze plugs out, can bearings to get all that stuff clean, real good. Hopefully get it painted. Once we get that done, we gotta pull the motor out of that thing over there. I'm gonna put this cardboard over it so it does not evaporatize overnight. See y'all tomorrow. Well, here's the deal, fellas. I just had to go rescue my nephew, my dandy, handy, dandy assistant. Uh, he broke a belt and a belt tensioner on his old Jeep. He was off mowing yards. And we're stranded, so I had to take some tools and whatnot, and we went and fixed that. Now that I'm back home, my S10, I got something in one of the back tires. So I'm going to get it up here on the lift. Yes, I'm getting it on the lift just for that, because I ain't getting on my knees. I told y'all. If I ain't got to, I ain't going to. So we're going to get the S10 on the lift. We're going to fix that tire. That means I got to get the Forte out of the way. Then once I get done with that... I gotta go get mama's car. I gotta put some Freon in it. Summertime's a coming. She ain't got no air. So we're gonna put some Freon in her car. Then once I get done with that, I got trash to haul off. I've been putting that off all week. Gotta do it. I've never seen anybody gather the trash I can in just a week. Then <laughs> after that, I gotta go to the grocery store. I've been putting it off for several days. I'm a growing boy. I got to have my food. I ain't gonna starve, no sir. Then, <laughs> after that, maybe, maybe we can get this motor, this block, out of this purple pyre, get it cleaned up and painted. And if we're lucky, we might get the motor pulled out today. I'm hoping we can at least do that. Doubt, well, we might get it tore down. We'll just see. But the motor, I don't think it's going to get put together today. No, sir. Anyway, let me get this old Forte off the left to get my S10 up here.
find the hole. I found it, I found it. See them bar bubbles? That means we got a leak. I got something, I don't know what it is. Nail or a screw. Let me pull it out and put a plug in it. All right, maybe I can grab it with some pliers now. Come on, man. Aha! It is a self-tapper. All right, let me get my plug kit. All right, let's ream this little fella out. Then, put our plug in. Get in the hole. Now, let me cut it off. I don't hold my pocket knife sharp enough or not. Did we fix the leak? I do not see any boobles. No, sir. Let me pump it up, though, because it ain't quite aired up enough. I wish I could put tires this wide on the old Forte. It sure would look better. The only way we can do that, though, is if we back half it. I ain't doing that. No, sir. I don't run a whole lot on the back of this thing, well, because these wide tires, plus it's just so light in the back end. 25 poundages we'll have to do. Let's check her one more time. Do not see any boobles. I think we got it. Let's put it back on the truck. Going down. The old paint job we did last year, it still looked pretty good. Still got my run. Right up in here somewhere. I reckon it'll be there till the day I die. Anyway, uh, we're gonna have to get this thing back in here sometime because it has started pulling to the left slightly when I get on the brakes. So we're gonna have to look at that, but for now it's got to go. One down, how many ever to go? Let's go. Obviously, she's got a leak, or we wouldn't have to be putting Freon in it. So I got me some stock leak. We're gonna put that in it, and then we're gonna charge it up. Hopefully, we'll this will fix it, and uh, she'll be cool all summer. Let me fire it up, turn the air on, and we'll get that stock leak in there. It says shake can well. That's probably good enough. Ow, it's hot. Come on now, woohoo, it's hot, dead gum. That high side line is very hot. They put the high side port up here, the one that you don't normally use, low side's way down there. That's, that's real, real smart. I think that's it. Now let me get a can of Freons put in it, see if we can get her charged up and cooling off. All right, let's get this here fritting on. On this here hose, get it down here burn our hand once more. All right, let's see what we got. I turn the can off, look at the gauge. See if we're in the green. Well, according to that, we're in the red, so that's not good. <laughs> it's coming down, let's see what it does. Well, I thought something was suspicious. It wasn't acting right. I took this off, looked down in here, See that little thing flopping back and forth? Well, it's broke. That's what pushes the valve core in and lets Freon go through. Well, apparently it broke after we did the stop leak. I don't know if I got another one of them. Uh, I know it on here, I don't think. I got some gauges right over here. Um, no, sir. Sure don't. Let me run to Mama's and see if I got another one. I'll be back in a minute. Well, I found this. As you can see, it's been mangled, ain't no gauge. That end's been cut off. The hose is pretty bad looking, but it's got a good end here. So I'm gonna cut this off, cut this off, put this end on this hose, and we'll keep on trucking. There it is. It is transferred to this hose here. Let's start the car up, put some Freon in it. 
As you can see, we're at the very tip top of the green. Oh yeah, we're doing pretty good there. Uh, just check it, it's blowing pretty cool. Hopefully that stop leak will take care of the issue and uh, we won't have to do this anymore. Took mama's car back to her. Trash has been dumpstered. Groceries have been gotten. Now that the day is basically over, well, you can see the sun has set. It sure has. <laughs> now we can now we can start working. Fellas, that's just a typical day here at the backyard butchery shop. Um, you know, had intentions pulling that motor and tearing it apart today. No, sir. Things happen around here. It's just, well, it's just a typical day here. Uh, what I plan on doing, let's pull that out, scrub it up, dub, knock cam brands out, freeze plugs, get it good and clean, hopefully get it painted, and we'll call it a day. Um, I've got to slow down a little bit. Uh, now, I'm thankful that I get to do what I love for a living. Don't get me wrong. But it's that's all I do anymore. I don't have much time just to relax or just take a day and just go do something. Very rarely do I get to do that. Um, well, I try to work out here, I don't know, eight hours a day. Sometimes that's six, sometimes that's 12. Then, you know, I got to go in the house there. I got usually two to four hours just about every night on the computer, editing videos, looking up parts, uh, seeing if this will work with that. If it won't, then do research and see what will. And Well, it's, that's pretty time consuming. Like I said, don't get me wrong. I'm glad I get to do what I love, but I got to slow down just a little bit. So I think tonight we'll just get this motor, uh, this block cleaned and prepped and painted. Then Monday, we'll pull that out and get it tore apart. Hopefully, we'll get this motor uh, put together for the end of this video. Let me get this thing pulled out. We'll go to cleaning on it. Let's get this thing out here and let it drain. Get all the wooders and stuff out of it. Then we'll put it on the engine stand. Hey, now don't be splashing me. I think what I'm gonna do with my purple power, we're gonna put it back in these jugs, take it and the tub and probably put it over in the garage, maybe even the old uh, little metal building. I gotta get me a little better pump though, cause that in there, the one I use you know, to pump my diesel fuel in there, it's kinda slow. So I gotta get me a little bit better pump, but yeah, I think that's what I'll do. That way it ain't taking up room in here. I would like to move that over there too. If I keep putting stuff in the garage, well, I ain't gonna have room to put stuff in there anymore. Anyway, let me get this on the engine stand, get out there and go spraying it down. I scrub a dub dubbed it last night and it got it pretty clean. I mean, it was just all caked in here. It looked pretty good. It was real bad back here. I gotta hit it with my little brush. And then I hit it up here too. Well, I can't really tell because it's too dark out here. Uh, I'm gonna scrub it a little more and we'll go spraying on it. Scrub a dub dub. I gotta get a putty knife to get that RTMV stuff off of there. Well, I got the cam bearings out. I got the freeze plugs out. Uh, I've cleaned and scraped this red paint till I'm sick of seeing red paint. I've been cleaning on this for two hours. Uh, anyway, I'm cleaning the water jackets out now. They ain't too bad. They're a little brown, but I've seen a lot worse. The 283 and the 40, that in the 40 now, whew, it was pretty bad. Oh, this in here looks pretty doggone good. Anyway, let me continue on doing this and I'm gonna blow it off. And, well, I done got some flash rust on the cylinders. That's not good. Uh, as soon as I get it blew off, dried off, I'll hit everything with WD-40 except for what I got to paint. Then I guess I'll let it dry for a little bit, and I'll hit it with some orange paint. We'll clean these head bolt 
Here he is, real quick. Well, it's about as clean as I can get it with the apparatuses and whatnot that I have to use at my disposal. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. Will it pass backyard butchery inspection with flying colors? It sure will. I uh, had a lot of flash rust in my cylinders. I hit them with the uh, dingleberry home for about five seconds each hole. Ain't no rust no more. No, sir, sure ain't. Um, I've got everything sprayed down with WD-40. I've been at this for about three hours, yes, sir. So I think I'm going to take a little break. What sucks about that? I've been doing this for about three hours. I might get a couple minutes of video. <laughs> yeah, that ain't no count. Anyway, um, this red paint just, I don't know, I could I chipped at it and it wouldn't break loose. So it's just going to be there. I'll cover it up. Anyway, I'm going to go take me a break. We'll come back and we're going to wipe down the surfaces that I'm going to paint. We'll hit it with some paint and then we're going to let it dry. Well, I got smart. Well, smart for me anyway. They got me some old heads, old intake, old time and chain cover. Put them on there. That way I ain't got to tape all that stuff up. No, sir. Only thing I got to tape up is this, this, and the fuel pump gasket area, and that's it. Got her wiped down with ammonia. As soon as it dries, I'm going to hit it with some paint. All right, I think you're dry enough, so let's turn this block orange. All right, there's the first coat. Time for a second coat. We'll lay this on a wee bit heavier. There's the freshly painted 327 block for the old Forte. Don't look too bad, no sir. Gotta do a little more cleanup though, cause them two heads that I used, well, they're about the dirtiest I got of the 87 pair of heads I got over there, yes sir. I ain't doing it tonight though, no sir, I'm tired, it's late. Tomorrow is Sunday, Sunday's a day of rest. That's what I plan on doing, I suggest you do the same. I'll see y'all Monday. Y'all look at here, I'm gonna zoom out, wrong way. Oh yeah, look at there. We ain't got no shadows and stuff going on here and down here. I just put my new uh, camera lens on. And I got a protector. It covers all three cameras. So hopefully that will bust instead of the actual camera lens. But yeah, that's mucho batero. I keep it on a 0.7 zoom. It's, you know, sort of wide, but it don't make like that pole. It don't make it look round if you go on out. I don't know if this one will do it or not. No, it ain't too bad. A lot of them though, when you zoom out, it'll make stuff look rounded. This one does pretty good. Anyway, you may be wondering why is the old four-wheel drive on the lift? Well, if you remember a few weeks ago, I told you we needed a new dipstick for the transmission. Well, I got one, it's over here on the table. Uh, I gotta mow the yard, it ain't gonna be today cause we gotta work on the Forte, but tomorrow, gotta mow the yard, and this is what I pull my lawnmower trailer with. And, uh, well, I'm gonna go ahead and fix it and then fill her up with transmission fluids. So that'll be taken care of cause it is slipping just a little bit right now cause it's low on fluid. Anyway, let's change that dipstick tube out. Goodness gracious, look at the rust on this truck. That's the cab corner and the rocker panel is, well, it's pretty much gone up to here. We're gonna have to fix that sometime or another. Anyway, let me get this transmission dipstick uh, swapped out with a new one. Then we'll get back on the old Forte. First thing we got to do, get this old one out. That should be pretty simple. I hope so anyway. Oh yeah, I just pulled it right out. I think I might have to pull it from the top. Cause it won't move anymore. Come on, wait a minute, it might come out. Come out this. Oh, look at here! He's coming out sort of, let's see. Yes sir, there's the old one. Uh, I probably could have made it work, but it seems like 
that grommet just didn't want to fit or something. Anyways, we'll save this for a 700 because that's what it fits. And let me get to the new one. Y'all might notice that I got my spectacles on right here. I don't normally wear them, but uh, putting the screen on that camera a while ago, I needed them. Yes, sir. My eyes were really blurry. But I got to focus for on a little spot, even reading for very long. It ain't good. They'll get blurry and go to water and I can't see. Anyway, I had them on for that. And I thought, well, let's just keep them on and see how they do. I don't like the progressive lens. Everything looks like it's swaying and the floor. It looks further away than what it actually is. It's just weird. So uh, I might go get your regular old bifocals. But as far as everything being clear, it's it's pretty doggone amazing. If I can get used to wearing them, I may, I, may, I may continue to wear them. I don't know. Let's get this dipstick up in here, though. Wait a minute. I think this is for, uh, you know, a, a 95, I think, K1500. Or maybe a 2500. But the 95s came with a 4L60, and that's what this is supposed to fit. So I got to find which bolt that this a bolt to, and then we got to get it out some kind of way. Hopefully, I don't I don't know that we'll accomplish that though. Let me see what I can figure out real quick. Yeah, uh, this is this is gonna have to come from the top, I do believe. Let me let her down. We now have a new dipstick tube on the old hoopty four drive. That's the one that belongs on it. But let me tell you this, it was a fight to get down, down through there. I finally got it though. And here's something else too. Well, the little tab that's welded to it that goes onto the stud on the bellhousing bolt. Well, it was about that much too high. So I had to take me a punch and drive it down where it'd go on that stud. Then I went to put a nut on that stud and well, it's metric. Yes, the threads on the bolt that go into the block, they're standard. And then, for whatever reason, they decided, let's make this stud metric. <laughs> I would like to meet the engineer that decided to do that. I really would. He, he's, well, he ain't real bright. So I don't have a metric nut, but I don't think it's going to come loose. Uh, next time I go to the bolt store, I'll get me a metric nut. Also, I took these two braces off. They were up in here, just a dangling for the last several years. It went to the old 700 bell housing. Can't use them on this one, so I decided to take them off. I'm going to let it down. i got to fill it up with transmission fluids. We'll be done with this. Well, I just noticed whilst I was lowering this thing that um, the sway bar bushings, they're gone. Every one of them. I don't, I don't understand that. On both sides. Yes, sir. So, yeah, it's just a bolt. Yes, sir. It's the same thing over here. Right up in there. Oh, yeah. I think I've got a sway bar, uh, whatever you call that, bolt link bushing kit. I mistakenly bought two several years ago. I'll have to find that. We'll, we'll put that on sometime. Y'all see that puddle of wooder right there on the floor? I do believe the old four-wheel drive is going to need a wooder pump. Plus, the temperature sending unit has quit working. Yeah, we got to do that pretty soon. I think what I'm going to do right now, it's pretty dirty. Really, over here, it's real dirty. Let me sweep at least half of this shop up. Then we'll get the old forte in here. Go tearing it apart. Y'all look at that thing right there, though, out here in the sunshine. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Man, that thing looks good. It sure does. Let's get busy. Get that motor out. Let me show y'all something real quick. We got to work on as far as these carburetor devices. Well, the first one, um, ain't got no pump shot much. And it, it wants to hesitate really bad just cruising along. Plus, um, a couple weeks ago, remember I adjusted on the carbs on the mixed idle mixture screws. I told you it idled up. Well, I never could get it to idle back down. I got the idle screw, uh, speed screw. It's back all the way out. It still idles at about 1100. We'll watch this right here. I don't know if y'all can tell or not, but it idled down a couple of hundred RPM at least. The butterflies, remember how they were sticking on that back carb? Well, it's letting a little bit of air leak through. Basically a vacuum leak. So we got to, we got to fix that. Anyway, let me shut it off and pull this motor out of here. Let me tell y'all something, fellas. It's hot today. It's 80 degrees. And it's only the middle of April. It's going to be a hot one this year. Got my little fan going over there. I had the big one going, but it's just, it's just too noisy. Uh, pretty soonly, like in the next two or three weeks, we got to get that air conditioner hooked up. 
See if we'll cool this shop off. Anyways, right now though, we're gonna get the transmission out first. I'm gonna take a drive shaft out. We gotta get the shifter off. I think I can manhandle that. It ain't it ain't that heavy. I don't, well, I don't know. We may. Where's it at? I don't right there. We might get our transmission jack just just to try it out. Anyway, let me uh, let me get some bolts loose. Get these here bolts. Oh my goodness! Why did I tighten them so tight? What in the devil? Goodness gracious! Well, we lost audio. Uh, my microphone come out of the phone plug about halfway, so I had no microphone. Anyway, uh, pull the drive shaft out, put that plug in the end of the transmission, so we don't lose no grease. Now I am undoing the shift arm from the transmission. And then I'm telling y'all, think, uh, if you got a lift or going to get a lift, you better get you about a six-foot step ladder. Because I forgot to undo the shift knob. So i got to go up there to do that. And uh, then I decide to unbolt the shifter from the transmission. And then I believe I'll tell y'all, once I get it loose, that, well, it ain't going to pull through the boot. It was hard to get it in there. And it's going to be impossible pretty much to get it out. So I say, well, we'll just let this little fella dangle right here whilst I get this transmission out of the way. Then I tell you, well, I gotta get this cross member out of here. So I start taking it loose, and well, I guess that's that's about it. Then I realized that my microphone had come unplugged, I plugged it back in, and that's where we pick it up. Well, I just realized that my microphone came unplugged, so I don't know how long it's been like that, but we're probably gonna have some audio issues. Anyway, I got this, um, What's this called? A transmission jack. I'm gonna try it. Let's just see how it does. We got a small leak on that side cover there. Very interesting. I might have to pull that off and redo that. I'll try to look at that. It likes a half an inch coming up high enough. <laughs> Y'all ever heard of MLS? Well, I don't reckon we're gonna use the transmission jack. I'll just manhandle it out of here but i do need to support this motor because it's going to flop on me I'll tell you what i'm going to do let me give me a ratchet strap put under that bell housing real quick i don't know how well this will work we're going to give it the old try though Well, it seems to be holding, for now anyway. Oh yeah! All right. I've never been accused of being real smart, but I do catch on to stuff eventually. <laughs> I forgot I got this jack. I just put the jack right here, hold it up. How about that? Oh yeah. Approximately right there. Well, let's move on back a little bit. On that bell housing. Actually, I need a 2 before or something underneath it. Alright, I'm not used to pulling motors, you know, with a lift, so I'm having to learn as I go. Alright, I think that might... I think that might do it right there. Um, let's get this transmission out of the way. Let me manhandle this little fella right here. Come on out of there! Come on out of there! Oh yeah! All right, now that I got that out, let me drain the water, and I'll start unhooking stuff here, exhaust wires, clutch stuff. Then we'll be able to go up top and start unhooking stuff.
I was told a couple weeks ago when I pulled the motor out of the old C30 with it on the lift, I was told I was defying logic. I'm not real sure how, but I reckon I'm going to defy logic again. We're going to pull this one out with it on the lift. I got to get the motor mount bolts. Oh, yeah. There's one. Oh, my knee. Oh, my knee. There's the other one. Um, let me move this power steering pump. A little bit. I'm gonna bring her up a little bit, and we got to go forward to miss this uh, brake master cylinder. All right, let me go forward. What are we hanging? On? Hanging on something. I've forgotten something. I bet you. <laughs> I bet you money something is still hooked up. No, I don't see nothing. Alright, let's go up. Up, up and away! Alright! I believe I've got it. Motor is out. Y'all remember how I told you a couple days ago, though, that I was fixing to slow her down? Well, it's happening right now. We all know my eyes are always bigger than my stomach when it comes to what I think I can get done in a day. And, well, this is all we're going to do today. Yes, sir. Ain't no way I can get that motor tore apart, get that and put back together. Um, that'll probably happen next week because tomorrow, like I said, I got to mow yards. That's going to take up half the day there. And then after that, we'll we'll get back on this. Hopefully next week, motor will be back in. We'll fix some of the little stuff I talked about. Uh, do some stuff with the rear brakes. Put shocks on the back. I don't know what else. Uh, we'll think of something, though. <laughs> anyway, I believe that's going to wrap it up for this week. Yes, sir, next week, I hope to have that motor back in that car. And dare I say, will we be done with it? I don't know. Probably not. But that's gold to be done with this car next week. Anyway, appreciate y'all watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you don't mind, hit that like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends. And until next time, go do something. Blur, blur.